What's going on guys? First off, you'll have to excuse the background noise. I have some baby chicks and ducks in the background and they don't know how to keep their beak shut so you'll have to excuse them. But anyway, I got a, re a viewer request to do a video on the boots that I wear. So uh, these are the boots I wear, but before we get into these, I want to do a little bit of backstory. So I remember when I was younger as a kid, before I really did a lot of working, uh, every now and then I'd, I'd get a pair of boots from my mom would take me to pay less shoes and I got a pair of boots and you know I was a kid it didn't really matter at the time loved having a pair of boots on but you know as I grew older I started to realize the importance of having a good quality comfortable set of work boots so for six years of my life I was a landscaper for the first year I went to Sears and I bought a pair of they were Caterpillar brand work boots which they look cool they had the Caterpillar name I thought oh man these are gonna rock and I had them on for about six months and they were probably the most uncomfortable things that I've ever worn uh, I, I really never went back to Sears for work boots like that I, who knows maybe they you know one of their brands are decent quality work boots but uh, my thought with that was Caterpillar of course, is a heavy machinery company. They're not a boot company, so they probably just bought some generic shoes from some Chinese company, put their brand logo on there, said, hey, we got some cool looking work boots, but they weren't comfortable. So after painfully walking around in those for about six months, I decided to try investing a, a good chunk of money in a good quality set of work boots, and I decided to try Red Wings. Uh, I remember my father telling me that he used them quite a bit in his younger days. So, you know, back in the 80s, uh, which I, I'm sure at the time, they, you know, they were probably high quality work boots. But in my opinion, over the years, Red Wings have declined some. This is just my opinion, you know, to each his own. But I ended up buying about a $250 set of boots from Red Wings. And I used them for landscaping for about a year and a half. And... That's all they lasted, about a year and a half. Where they really blew out was at the, kind of kind of just a little bit back from the toe, because you do a lot of bending right here. So this leather is, is normally under a, a lot of strain. And also in the toe, these aren't the Red Wing boots, by the way, I'm just using these boots as an example. But in the toe, it was just a single piece of leather like this. And there were a lot of cuts and abrasions in the toe, but I mean, it seems to be a common problem with Red Wing boots that, you know, just after a year or, or so, they, they just blow out. So, on top of that, those boots, you know, already being $250 or whatever they were, they were not made in America. So, I kind of stepped back from Red Wing, Red Wing and I, I decided to start looking at other options. I don't have much experience with Timberlands. For me, they're a little bit mainstream, and everybody's like, oh, my Timberlands, my Timberlands. Well, you know, I, I, I don't really know much about them, but they're a little bit too mainstream for me. So the boot brand that I really like is Thoroughgood. Uh, and all these boots right here are Thoroughgood. And the great thing about Thoroughgood is all these boots are made in America, and they're actually at quite an affordable price. I think between each pair of these boots, I... Don't quote me, but I, I'd say all these boots are probably in the price range from, you know, maybe 140 to 220. Uh, I again, I don't have the exact prices, but that would be my guess in the general range for all these. So after I draw my Red Wing boots, these are the boots that I went to. These are Thoroughgood 81. No, excuse me, 814-2401, and these are a Moxon toe work boots. And I really like moccasin toe, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, but these are non-steel toe, and I was landscaping with these for about, probably for about four and a half years, something like that. And, uh, is that right? Year and a half, five, six, yeah, so about four and a half years. And, I mean, the leather of these boots, it's still in really great shape. There's not really any cuts or abrasions. The toe, uh, the section where I said my red wings blew out is still really intact. Uh, granted, you can look at the sole. There is some wear on the sole. There's a lot of wear right here. I'd imagine the, the leather on this is never really going to conk out. But what's going to go first is probably the sole, which I, I think Thoroughgood does offer a resoling program. But I really like these boots. And what I specifically like about moccasin toe boots 
is, let, let me first revert to what I dislike about a single piece of leather for the toe. Now, in order for them to get the leather on this toe of a, a regular boot, they have to stretch it and they have to form it and in my eyes that makes the leather more fragile and more susceptible to uh, cuts and abrasions. So these boots I've had for about a year, these are Thoroughgood. I had to get steel toe boots, that's why I transitioned from these boots to these boots. Um, but I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a lot of cuts and abrasions on these. With the moccasin toe boots, I like that they take two pieces of leather, so they take one piece of leather and kind of wrap it around the toe, and then they take a second piece of leather and sew it on the top. So uh, in my eyes, you have a stronger, or, or two thicker and stronger pieces of leather that aren't all stretched out and are much less likely to uh, cut and be damaged, unlike these. So. That's why I really like moccasin toe boots. So again, these are 814, 4211s, four and a half years, really comfortable boots. I still wear them around the house, but now I kind of like to wear composite toe just to protect my toes, which again, within that, I, I know I'm getting off topic here, but there's a bit of argument within that. Um, say you have a steel toe boot and a heavy piece of metal comes down, as opposed to you know just the metal coming down and crushing your toes, then you're gonna have the, uh, the the steel toe come back and literally pinch your toes off, but I, I don't know. I'm not really working with any kind of metal that heavy, and you know, a steel toe is nice to have. So, yeah. Back on topic here, these are my second set of Thoroughgood boots, which I had to buy these for uh, my current job, and they are steel toe. The reason I couldn't keep these was keep wearing these. Well, I can still wear them, but I can't wear them at work. I had to buy these because of the steel toe. And these are 804-4478 uh, Thorough Good Work Boots. Again, made in America. All these boots are made in America. And what I like about these is they're really comfortable. I step in there and there's almost like a gel sole. So every time I step in these, it's like literally slipping on a, a slipper. So they're really comfortable walking around all day. But what I dislike about these boots is it doesn't have that moccasin toe. So I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but there's already cuts and abrasions starting to form on here. So that's what I dislike about these boots. So still like that they're made in the USA. What I didn't realize at the time was Thoroughgood actually manufactured a set of boots that has the moccasin toe style. And it's a set, I believe these are composite toes, so they're not steel toe, but I mean, they still offer that toe protection. And then this, this Thoroughgood boot model is 804-4368. And I'm absolutely in love with these boots. They're comfortable. They have like that gel sole like the other boots have. They have the moccasin toe. So again, in my eyes, the leather isn't stretched and thinned out. It's just two thick pieces of leather joined. Leather joined. So I, I feel like it's much less likely to, uh, to be damaged from cuts and abrasions. It's really well constructed, you know, triple stitch, uh, double stitching on the toe, just feels like a really robust boot, made in America. And these are my go-to boots right now. I haven't taken these to work yet, because I already purchased these, I think I'm just gonna wear them out until the, uh, the toes fail, which I know it's gonna happen, and it's probably gonna happen within a year or something, but. I absolutely adore these boots, and I think they're stylish too. You know, when you first buy them, they're, they have a white sole, which is starting to get dirty now. Of course, I could clean that up. All their boots have a USA flag to symbolize that they're made in America. And in my eyes, this is just a sharp looking boot. Really, really nice boots. So, if you're wondering what kind of boots I wear, this is them. They're all good, 804, 4368. And while we're on the topic of boots, I kind of go over this once a year. It's really important that you treat your boots. Uh, I used to do a two or three step leather treatment to my boots, but what I found that I really like now is Hubbard Shoe Grease. I've been using this for about two years now. It's a really great product. What I do to clean my boots is I'll just take a soft bristle brush, take the laces off, brush off all the loose dirt and dust, grab my hand in here and just smother these boots in Hubbard shoe grease, which it revitalizes the leather. It adds uh, minerals and nutrients, and it, it re-moisturizes re the leather. 
So think of it this way, you know in the winter when you're dealing with a lot of salt, your hands start to get dry and cracked? Well, it's the same idea with boots. Uh, the boots don't have a, a, a moisture and mineral replenishment source, so you need to do that manually, and that's why you use some type of leather treatment product. But what will happen is, you know, if you let your boots dry out and you continue to use them, then they're going to start cracking. I actually got a funny comment in one of my videos the other day. Uh, I was talking in one of my previous boot videos where the, uh, you know, the leather started to crack and, and some gentleman actually went to say that, well, they crack because you oiled them too much. And to me, that was just, I, I, I couldn't understand that. Does your skin crack from putting too much moisturizer on it? Like, that's, that's just ridiculous. There's no such thing as putting too much product on your boots. I like to really smother it on there, let it soak in. And then perhaps reapply again if I think it really needs it. But treat your leather, Hubbard shoe grease. I think it's a great product. Helps waterproof your leather boots too. So that's about all I have to say for these. That's about all I have to say on boots. Hopefully this doesn't sound too crazy or sporadic. Of course everybody's gonna have their own opinions on boots. This is just mine. Love these boots. I think they're the best in the world. I also want to mention I really only like to wear eight-inch boots. I don't like to wear six-inch. Uh, the reason why I like 8 inch boots is because they offer better protection for your ankles. From time to time you'll step on a piece of uneven pavement or a stick or whatever, or a piece of concrete and your boot will roll. And by having 8 inch boots that provides support to your heel and ankle so it reduces the chance of you literally snapping your ankle. So I recommend tall boots. I think they're really comfortable and that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to these boots in the description, as well as I'll leave a link to Hubbard Shoe Grease in the description, so that way you guys can easily find it if you're interested. If you have any other requests for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll see what I can come up with. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.